These things can really be a time saver. Let's go ahead and talk about selection libraries. What is going on Pro EDU community? It's Dustin Volkema, and today we're going to be talking about the process that I use on creating selection libraries in Photoshop for compositing or post-processing my 3D renders. Now, it's not really so much about how this is done because it's a very simple process in nature, but maybe a little bit more about why I choose some of the different masks and alphas that I do from different passes. And we'll be getting in depth with quite a few of these in later tutorials, but in this one here, let's go ahead and talk about what that beginning process might look like. All right, here we are in Photoshop. Uh, we've got our base beauty render here. Um, and what we're talking about now is how to create selection libraries and what that process might look like. Now, the beautiful part of 3D renders is that we can export multiple different info channels that we can use to create various selections and alphas here in Photoshop to use for post-production. And creating these libraries in the alphas, or sorry, in the channels tab, makes it very easy to just make these repetitive selections over and over again without having to go back to these base passes every time. Now, normally your channels is down right next to your layers panel here. And this is one that I just detached and rearranged in my workspace because I like to have this open for my composites. Now let's start talking about the way that we would go about creating selection libraries. So we have our material ID here, which is going to give us a color that represents every specific material that's in our scene. And so what we can do here is press W for the wand tool, we can make a selection here and then in our channels tab, we can head down to the bottom and this little rectangle with the empty circle is saving our selection as a channel, which I would call an alpha. So as soon as we click that button, now we have alpha channel one. So we can go ahead and name this primary. So now we have a primary leather alpha and we can repeat this process now by just selecting different parts or different materials on our object and going through the process of creating these new alpha channels that we can do. So we can go ahead here and we'll say primary, we'll just call that one second. And now let's go ahead and move down. So we have our material ID, new color per material that's on our object or our scene in the material, or sorry, the object ID. The object ID is going to give us a color that's very much like a clown pass. Um, it's just going to be a different color per specific object that's in our scene. So with this here, this is going to allow us to change everything at a very, what I would consider maybe a micro level uh, for selections and selecting every little piece that goes into this 3D render. So all of these stitches here that are all individual pieces, we could go down to the stitch and adjust lighting or colors that are on them individually. It's a good pass that I like to have when I'm working on various projects. Now the shaded normal, shaded normals are pretty cool. Um, X, Y, and Z coordinates. So if we go ahead and take a look at our red, which would represent our X axis left to right, this is going to give us a really good smooth alpha to use for a layer mask that would allow us to make adjustments specifically to these different directions. And we'll get a bit more in depth with how I use this pass later on in other videos, but this is definitely one of my favorite 3D render passes to use. So we have the green or our Y channel that is the up and down direction, and then the blue, which is front to back. So these are gonna allow us to go in and we'll just say the green, controller command, click on the little thumbnail here for the channel, save selection as alpha, and I could call this Y plus. So I know that this one is now going to be lighting from top to bottom. And if I wanted to add fill light from the bottom to top, I can simply take this alpha channel here, drag this down to a new channel, double click, and we'll go to minus. So now, I have the Y minus, 
and we can control our command I to invert that channel. And now we have all of the negative Y information. So if we wanted to add some type of fill with curves or anything like that, it's very possible to do. Now, this is a really nice way to go about starting off the process for compositing your 3D renders. Because once you have, say, your different materials or your different normals directions, maybe looking at something like a light direction pass here specifically, which gives you information based on the specific lighting in your scene, or even the Z depth pass, having all of this information before you start a composite is important. So let's take a look at the Z depth here. Now, the red, green, and blue channels are all going to be the same, so I'm just going to control or command to click the blue channel, and we'll save selection as alpha. And we can name this Z plus. And then what we'll do is drag this down to duplicate this and then name this Z minus. And then controller command I to invert that channel. So what this is going to do is give us the ability to affect foreground and background elements, uh, whether that's color atmospheric perspective, what have you, it gives you different options. And so in building selection libraries like this, it really makes sense to take hold of the channels tab and really start to work with. All right, so that wraps up the basics on selection libraries using channels and how I might go about that process. Now, like I said, this is something that I do very early on in the compositing stage and for something like working on client products, it really makes sense to have selections for different materials, fabrics, woods, leathers, things that they're really going to hone in on and want color correct. This is going to make your process a lot easier. Now, in later videos, we're really going to talk a lot about each of these passes independently, not only how to set them up in various render engines, but also how to use them in Photoshop and the type of things you can use to manipulate any of your artwork that you're doing in 3D. Now, this is definitely one of those things that I wish I used early on. When I first started compositing, it was literally just taking that render pass and having to make it visible every time, use a wand selection, rinse and repeat that process over and over, and it got super tedious. So even though this is a very simple and less complicated or advanced kind of tutorial, hopefully if you're not doing it at this point, make use of that channels tab. It's really going to help you out overall. So that wraps up today's video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, Never stop learning. I'll see you guys in the next one.